Hey guys, back out in the shop today. We got an all power 2000 PSI pressure washer that we're working on. It'll run when you spray carb cleaner into it, uh, but other than that, it, it won't start on its own. Couple thumb bolts there, you know, the little unscrewable ones like that. Pop those off. Air filter's dirty, so we're gonna wash that. Here's a better look at the carburetor. It's pretty dirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take these bolts out here. They could be like 3 8 and then, uh, then we'll pop the carb off and get it cleaned in our ultrasonic cleaner. And you're not gonna be able to get at your bolts, so you're gonna have to just pull this little plastic piece off, then you'll be able to get at your bolts. I said they were 3 8 before, they're actually 10 mil. It's an all power, so it's basically a Chinese Honda knockoff. Okay, so we got that piece off. Now this carburetor is on studs, so it should just slide off. You just might have to watch about these little uh, bushings in here. So you're gonna take those out. There's gonna be one on each side. You don't wanna lose them. You're gonna wanna take your linkage here, just uh, push on it there, pull up on it here. It should pop right out. There we go. Just watch you don't bend up your spring too much. And then we'll uh, disconnect fuel line here, pull this carb off and uh, get it on the bench just to uh, disassemble it before we put it into the ultrasonic cleaner. Okay, fuel line didn't want to come off because uh, it's pretty seized here on the uh, the fuel intake. So I cut it. What I'll do is I'll end up taking an X-Acto knife and cutting this down the length so that I can peel it off. I'll put the two pieces together next to a new piece of fuel line and I'll just cut a new length, the same length, and uh, replace that. Carb's pretty dirty guys. Now you guys can't smell what I smell. If you've ever smelt uh, the sap from a pine tree, that's exactly what uh, this stuff is. So I think this was sitting like in a, you know, the guy's backyard or something and uh, yeah, really weird. Really weird, but uh, all of like the gunk around here, like uh, it's on my fingers and it's it's uh, sticky and it smells just like pine sap. But like I said, I'm gonna disassemble this carb. So we're gonna take uh, the bolt down here off. Uh, we'll unscrew this jet here. Um, again, we'll unscrew the jet up here. We'll disassemble everything that we can and uh, we'll get this thing cleaned up. Okay, we got this thing apart. The, uh, the inside doesn't look as bad as the outside, which is good. I'll uh, unscrew this uh, jet here and, uh, you know, pull the pin, take the float and the needle valve out and drop this thing into our ultrasonic cleaner. Somebody's definitely been inside this carburetor before because there's no hanger. So there was just the needle valve there and the float sitting on top of it. And uh, if we can get a shot of it here, there was no hanger for the needle valve to sit on the float. That there's the real bad spot. So I'm going to hit that with some degreaser blast it with the hose just to get the majority of the gunk off of it and then uh, I'll throw the culmination of these parts, uh, the sediment bowl, uh, the jets and uh, yeah the bottom bolt, everything except the uh, the float and the needle valve. And uh, I was saying there was no hanger, uh, this might uh, just be a design where it doesn't hang. So I'm gonna have to research it, maybe that just sits in and then uh, the pressure from the float keeps it in. I'm not too sure, so I'm gonna have to look up on that. Okay, so this one, uh, I'm guessing it doesn't have a hanger. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but I got the needle valve in there, and the float's on, and I do have the rod in, in place holding the float on. And I'm guessing it's just the pressure from the float that holds the needle valve in there. That's good, we don't have to order any parts. It may surprise you guys, but I definitely don't know everything. So I gotta research the things that I don't know about so that I do know, and then I'll remember for next time. So I'll go ahead and uh, disassemble this. Like I said, I'm gonna hit the big stuff here with some degreaser with the hose, just so that uh, it doesn't fill our ultrasonic cleaner with gunk. We'll put her on for 15, 20 minutes and uh, bring you back when it's done. Okay, so we got the carburetor cleaned up in the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, it all looks... Uh, fairly clean except for you know a couple spots in the corners there but uh, other than that yeah guys it came out pretty good so I'll get this thing put back together and uh, we'll test it out we got a new fuel line in it I'm just gonna go and uh, clean up these plastic pieces here just so that they're not covered in dirt and you guys can see there's all kinds of nasty stuff on here so I'm gonna go and get these cleaned up get this back together we'll put some little bit of fresh gas into it and get it fired up okay so we got all of our uh, parts here, our air filter uh, casing and whatnot, all cleaned up. Uh, we got the air filter cleaned up as, uh, as best we can get it. So I'll uh, coat this in a little bit of oil and uh, we'll put the shroud back on and uh, get all this stuff back together. 
You guys can also see we just hit the uh, the exhaust shroud guard here with a little bit of high temp uh, flat black just to make it look a little nicer. Using a 10 millimeter wrench, we got our nuts back onto our uh, carburetor studs with this uh, plastic uh, air filter backing in place here. Now we'll go ahead and put that little screen, uh, plastic screen that goes over this and uh, then get our air filter in and uh, the air filter casing that goes on the outside. Again, making sure to hook up the valve breather to your air box when you do that. And uh, that just goes into the hole right there where my uh, my finger was. And you just wanna press it into the back of that hole right there. Once you get those tight, go ahead and put your little piece on there. And then we can go ahead and get the air filter on. Then once you get your air filter in, go ahead and put your outer casing on, then thread in these little thumb screws. And now that we got all that done, we got our uh, muffler shroud back on with just a couple of 10 millimeter bolts there. Now we'll go ahead and uh, take the spark plug out, clean it up, gap it, and uh, replace it if we need to. Okay, we got the uh, spark plug cleaned up. I'll make sure that the gap is right. It does look like it's at 30 thou, but I'll check it anyways. Hopefully this thing fires up, then we could warm it up, drain the oil, uh, change the oil, 10W30, and uh, this thing's done. That was in here was an E6TC, and uh, just doing a quick little uh, cross-reference, uh, it's an LD E6TC, but uh, it matches to the one that's uh, supposed to be in here, so that's all good. We'll go ahead and get this in, and it's a 13 16 socket. Here we got the choke off. Kill switch set to the on position. We'll give her a little pull here, see if she fires up. All right, guys, all power, 2000 PSI pressure washer. Now he wanted to uh, trade this for uh, a lawnmower, pay us a little bit of money, plus this for uh, one of our lawnmowers. But uh, we really don't need a pressure washer like this. We got another one that we use and uh, yeah, so basically we just told him we could fix this for cheaper than what it would cost to sell it. So we fixed it up. So he'll pay us for the labor and then uh, basically he'll just turn around and sell it and make a little bit of money off of it. So we were just letting this thing warm up for a little bit. Now we can change the oil. Okay, so we gotta drain the oil. That bottom bolt right there that goes into the engine, that's your oil drain. Uh, you could end up opening up your dipstick tube and just uh, tipping it over, but that's gonna make one hell of a mess. So what I'm gonna do is remove these uh, four engine mounts here and just uh, take the engine off of this little, this little cart here. It's only four bolts. I can slide the engine right back uh, you know, put it right into my pan up on a couple blocks or something like that. Literally four bolts, that's it, no mess, and then, uh, you know, put the engine back in and bolt it back up. And for this, we're going to be using a T40 Torx. So here's your uh, anti-vibration bushings. You just want to, you know, put those back when you're done with that. But there's the engine. Like I said, guys, four bolts, nice and easy. So now I can uh, put that up on a workbench and uh, maybe put a couple two by fours on the one side, set up my oil drain pan, and uh, we won't have a, a big mess to worry about. Here we're gonna be using Castrol GTX 10W30, and we just got our uh, smaller oil container here, and we've measured out 700 milliliters. You guys probably can't see that, but that's 800, that's 700 there, and uh, we'll go slowly once we get it down to uh, oh, about there, and uh, you know, you wanna fill it up, this model takes 700 milliliters of oil or to the point where it's up to your dipstick and you don't want it coming past the threads. And you guys can see, this was probably oil from a previous oil change. And uh, yeah, you guys can see how much of a mess it makes. So I'm gonna take uh, the hose to this, even though it's kind of raining right now, but I'm gonna take the hose to this with a little bit of degreaser just to clean it up so that when the guy sells it, you know, it looks nice. See, look at that guys, looks brand new. Apart from that, you know, sticker down there that tore off. But so now when the guy goes to sell it, you know, it won't look half as bad as it did. Okay, so I just threw this up here on the uh, workbench and uh, got my socket here. Just uh, kind of reaching underneath and tightening these up. I got the, uh, I got this one, that corner, the corner back there. I just got uh, this front one to do. It's pretty simple. You just feed in your, uh, your bolt, 
thread it in. You know, it's uh, you can slide this and adjust it. You want to get one slightly uh, snug so that uh, you know the thing's not wobbling around and whatnot. But uh, yeah, pretty easy to do, guys. Here you go, guys. All power, 2,000 psi pressure washer, carb clean, oil change, everything you need to know. It's just a little 2.4 horsepower overhead valve engine. It ran good. There was no ticking, no knocking. So uh, didn't need to shim the valves. Everything works as it should. We got her all cleaned up for the guy. So now he should be able to sell it, make a little bit of money off of it. We get paid, he gets paid, everybody's happy. So if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to uh, leave a like for me. I upload weekly. The best way to get notified is if you're on mobile, click that little bell down below and you'll, uh, you'll be notified of all my latest uploads. Be sure to click here to subscribe and click here for my latest video. And uh, as always, thanks for watching, guys.